That was fun. Nice to see you. That was What's going on guys? We're on the White River this morning and it's February the 3rd and that's the first fish of the morning and hopefully we're going to get many more. Uh, we're going to be throwing the jigs and white trout magnets because these fish are eating shad. But a beautiful, beautiful first fish in the morning. It's been a day so it can only go some, go up from here. Burnt the fire out of my finger. Motor's not peeing. But we're going to have a good day. Buddy. It closes at the end of October and you can't fish it again until February 1st. They refer to it as opening day. It was so crowded up there. I think at one point we counted 27 boats just within 500 yards or so of us. So we knew that we were in a decent spot because you couldn't fish back behind us. So at least we weren't having to play bumper boats as bad as some people were. So we just decided to camp it out right there. So we'd fish with the Maribu jig some, and we'd caught a couple fish. But then we switched over to the trout magnet. And I've always wondered what a white trout magnet would do when there's shad coming through the dam. And they were definitely coming through the dam. And so we used a nickel head, a white body. I think Todd calls it Old Faithful. Uh, but we were using Old Faithful. And make a couple casts in the backwater and thunk, thunk, thunk. we caught a couple rainbows right off the bat but nothing huge and you know we know that there's some big fish up there so we're out there and we decide well let's start working the current a little bit more just whenever we got a break from all the boats so i remember making a long cast as long as i could all the way up towards the dam and it's drifting down i'm popping my slack out I'm in my line and everything it's drifting down nothing make another one nothing so i'm like okay well maybe maybe i need to go a little bit deeper so i set it about two feet deeper make as long of a cast as i can pop my slack out bend my line float gets about even with the boat and it's like a brick wall until i feel oh, oh, oh. and if you fish long enough you know when you feel those head shakes on that rod it's like oh my that's a good one. What's going on? I got a fish on. It feels like a good one. Yeah. Uh, did you see those edge feet? Yeah. So this fish just made a long, long run to start off. And then he gets to the end of that run and I took the trolling motor off spot lock so that now I'm drifting down to him. Because when you hook into a big fish on two pound line, you're not gonna reel him in. What I mean by that is you're better off by going straight river runs through it and basically chasing that fish down. I think the boat's just moving to him. Yeah. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Now there's your bobber. Let's see if we can get a glimpse of him. pound test you can land these big fish it's doable but you got to let them run so he makes a long run while he's making that run my track set loose he's just screaming out there you got a glimpse of him yet to know what he is no i don't have my glasses on yet Oh, he's not small. No, he's not. <laughs> so 
it was several minutes before we even saw what it was. And we finally realized, okay, we've got a really, really good yeah, brown really on nice the end brown. of the line. So, hey, James, why don't you dip that camera under water? We'll see if we can't get some shots of the fish under the water. That fish dives straight down to the bottom and takes off again. When it took off the second time, it ran underneath the boat, around the trolling motor, and then about another 50 yards up there to the dam. And so I'm in the back of the boat, and I scramble up to the front of the boat, and I've got my rod down in the water. I'm using one of these nine foot trinity rods. I've got it down in the water, and I fish it all the way around. And sure enough, this dude was still Turn on the end of the line. <laughs> we should have tried to whip him when we had a chance. Yeah, we shouldn't have been freaking filming. Oh man. That is a solid trout. Any droplets on the screen? Are we good? I think we're good. Yeah. Well, 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 figuratively speaking. We're good in that regard. <laughs> we knew. By the grace of God, we got lucky on that one. We get it in a little bit closer, and I remember it's only like four feet away from the boat. Its head is like three inches underneath the top of the water, and yeah, I'm sitting here with my arms raised up. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Tell him James to net the fish, and finally James is able to get the net under the fish, and we get it in. And I tell you, talk about relief. <laughs> oh my goodness. What do you have to say for yourself? Good. I have to say that was kind of fun. Let's leave him in the water. That is a very large trout. Yeah, it is. Really, one time I said, hey, I didn't bring a scale. Yeah. I mean, every day out there is great. But one fish is all it takes. And we were blessed. We got that one fish. Landed a 27-inch brown on two pound test, two pound fluorocarbon leader, white trout magnet, and I tell you, that is a memory. And that's what it's about. All right, guys. So we just caught a really, really good fish. And what I caught him on was the trout magnet system and that right there, the nickel head and white body trout magnet all it takes. The entire air system with the two pound line, the fluorocarbon leader, the actually I was using the panfish float. But this is the biggest trout I've caught in a long, long time on the system. The white is tremendous. We're gonna let him go.